8名の意見は注意なそれでは2月9日スプリンカード東西戦の2人ともです。No, it's not. よろしくお願いします。はい。Alex, look, Ken. Early jump jab. This footage looks pretty good. Maybe slightly jittery. Oh, that was nice. He had a juggle. He actually went for it, too. He went for the right shit. He could have done stand strong into knee there. The knee was going to combo. Normally, that doesn't combo. Actually. I'm not actually sure if it combos with ADX. The knee might only hit opponents. Ooh, nice juggle. Who are not currently being juggled. Unless you exit, to be honest. Ed will be played in tournaments, but I don't know if he'll be that common. I don't think he will. Ugh! That was not... Why didn't you light? He did like heavy or something, medium. There's no input overlap there. Well, there is. But like, there was no light punch, there was no negative edge. The big man. Alex early jump fierce is pretty good in this matchup because Hugo's so tall. You can like get in on Hugo and then neutral jump and then do jump fierce and catch a throw attack or something like that in SPD. It's not super risky. It's always a little bit jittery this footage before uh, the names appear. Doing something to adjust the names probably slows it down a bit. That's a nice jumping combo. Early jump jab is like almost always a mistake. If that was EX, he had the meter too. Maybe it was a failed super actually. That would make sense. Because the super would have been a pretty good thing to land there. I'm surprised that didn't stun. Is Rob Nito a super popular guy? I think I recognize the name, but I didn't really watch that much shit on his channel. I didn't really know about him until, like, he messaged me. It looked like he, like, from what I could gather, he, like, did comment, he, like, didn't have that many opportunity. wow. Didn't have that many opportunities to do commentary before. And I was a good opportunity for him to be able to do commentary on a video. It was like a pretty cool little idea. I'm not like trying to say it was like fully self-motivated, although it probably was. It's not a bad thing if it was. I have like no interest in Tekken and I've been asked that a lot lately. I have like a mild interest from a spectating perspective. If Tekken's on, I'll frequently watch it. I don't dislike the game. But um, I don't know that much about it. I'm not like a... I'm not by any means an expert in it, or even like good. Let me go throw. It's a really bad Lariat, really. Lariat is basically a move that Hugo almost shouldn't use. Non EX Lariat. It's very niche. Like, it's not that good at shooting down jumps. It has virtually no combo ability. My favorite characters in this game is Aura by a long shot. From a gameplay perspective, from a design perspective, it's probably... Mm, that's a hard question to answer. I like a lot of the strike characters from a design perspective. I guess it might be Remy. He is aesthetic. Early, that was like a late jump jab. Very unusual. Don't normally see that option there. Ugh, a little late. For those of us who only um, got acquainted with Yuri and after Street Fighter V, or because of Street Fighter V, I should say, the key difference between Yurian in this game and Yurian in that game is that this Yurian's mirror pushes the opponent away, like the close mirror in 5. So you have to cross the opponent up if you want a mirror to bounce the opponent back at you. 
Not only that, but if you do cross the opponent up and then bounce them sufficiently close to the mirror, it'll actually be unblockable. You cannot block both directions at the same time in this game. You always block towards the opponent. So even if you get hit into a mirror, you don't block towards the mirror, you block towards the opponent. But the game just gets really confused if you're getting hit from both sides at the same time. Technically speaking, Oni can already do anti-air um, by DP and then jump Raging Demon. That just, like, works. It works at almost all ranges, too. That was an unblockable. Akuma's grounded demon. Wait. Akuma. I take it back. That's whack. I think Evil Ryu has shenanigans like that too. Juggling into demon. They have to do like stuff like that because demon for supers are really, really strong in Omega. Like that's one of the balancing philosophies. They try to improve characters approach, they try to hurt characters run away. They try to remove uh uh, hard knockdowns, increase damage on throws, and they try to increase the fuck out of damage on supers. Damage and combo ability. That's probably not too far off from like a fully optimal combo. Because the super does so much damage, you need very few things, and because the super ends combos, you need very few actions to minimize the amount of scaling on the super. So that most highly optimal combos in Omega mode will almost always be like one jump in attack, then like one or two grounded attacks into um, super. That might be normal special super. That might be normal normal super. For every character I found that's been true so far. That was a good uh, dash throw. That was a good awareness of how thick the mirror was, how far Remy would move dashing, and where Yurian was likely to be. That was like a, a very small thing, but it demonstrated really good awareness of his character and his opponent's character and the tendency of the match. He did a super jump there, so no cold blue kick. Ooh. That might have been, that sense strong might have been a failed super, to be honest. It's kind of an unusual sense strong to do there, and the super would have linked. It wasn't that unusual. But, like, far away universal overhead on hit into super is a very common thing. I Oddish. Is it Oddish after the Pokemon? Or is there some other dank reference? That was a well-spaced overhead. That was a well-spaced mirror. The overhead was fine. But, like, the mirror itself was the really well-spaced thing. You want the mirror to barely not be hitting. Because it lasts a lot longer if it's barely not hitting. But you don't want it so wide that they can actually move or attack. Or else they can go for shit like uh, attacking through the mirror. Depends on the character. Some characters are pretty good at that. Some are really bad at it. Hadoken. I already know I'm being memed on. 
That was a good red parry. I already know I'm being memed on, but that's called um, either a metallic sphere or a light of virtue, depending on who you're asking about. Yurian is made of metal. For those who are not aware of the deep lore of Street Fighter 3. Gil has power over um, fire and ice, and Yurian has power over metal and electricity. That was pretty cool, that background house he got over the low. It's like, it's like Colossus meets Magneto. <laughs> trying to poke through the mirror but didn't succeed. That's a pretty good button. Heavies beat. Heavies can't trade with mediums or lights in this game. And that's a heavy with a pretty good hitbox. I guess you guys, even if you only played Street Fighter V, you'd probably have a pretty good idea that Yurian stands fierce is a pretty good button. The best X Man is Nate Gray. Yurian was pretty nicely handled in Street Fighter V, both in gameplay and visual design. The only thing, the only small gripe I have is his hair color. And the way they used his V skill to like make him metallic instead of him always being metallic. They got his personality pretty well too, to be honest. I'm not sleepy. Maybe a little sleepy. I think I find myself using a nighttime voice at night and a daytime voice in the day, just intrinsically. That was a good parry and a good, uh, that's like the kind of parry you have to go for there. A couple parries into blocking is often very strong. That strike he can get it pretty nutty, but he's um he's very calculating. But he can get a bit wild. I think Street Fighter V story mode actually kinda showed that off. I literally don't even know what Canada is. Nice parry. Punish was kind of weak, but he didn't have a great punish there. He might have been able to hit a button, like a jump heavy, and hit the landing recovery of the EX headbutt. But EX headbutt has very little recovery once Yurian actually lands. So, you know, it was a crapshoot. Jump Runhouse was probably better than jump short, but he wasn't going to get anything huge there, probably. Fun fact, Tokido played Yurian a lot in this game. Tokido was mostly known for his Chun-Li, though, which is what he played for most of the life of this game. Teach it to you. I can only teach one character. Unless you're asking Apocalypse. I mean, I could loosely teach you like Ken. I could teach you some basic things to look for, for like any character. There's like a really good um, 12 tutorial if you're still interested in like 12. 12 has like an extremely good YouTube tutorial <laughs> that talks about what he's all about. That being said, 12 is like, why would you play this character tier? That was weird. Was she not in the mirror? She didn't take any hit at all.
Mechanically, Street Fighter 3 is the game that most of the later Street Fighters used. She didn't bounce into the mirror for that one either. Chun Li's very narrow. I mean, Fong's damage is pretty bad, but like 12's damage is on an entirely different level. 12's not really lacking in options. Well, he is. He's definitely lacking in combos. That was an empty cancel. That was pretty hot. Empty cancels to super. You have to buffer pretty fast in this game, especially off of fast normals like Chun Li stands strong. Twelve is just a kind of disheartening character because you like land like a hundred hits on the opponent and they're still not dead. Because all the hits you landed were like jump jabs and ground jabs, low shorts, one hit of backs, and then you eat two Chun Li crutch forwards and you're dead. I don't think two crutch forward supers from Chun Li will actually kill any character in this game, but it'll come close. Maybe Akuma. They didn't intend for 12 to be bad. Nothing about 12's design really seems like he would be... I mean, like, a lot of... He's obviously missing stuff. His combo options are obviously shitty. But I thought it would be, like, like, Dalsim. Where, like, his combo options are shitty, but, like, his footsie options are so good that it makes up for it. They just failed. Fong is definitely not okay. But he's not that bad. He might be the worst character in the game. But he's not, like, significantly the worst character in the game. He's certainly not unusable. Like, if you look at Fog in terms of his matchups, he's usually alright. Some matchups he loses, some matches he's okay. But these matter a lot in this game. It's just, it's just the ranges are different. A lot of characters play at a hyper close range. I say as we watch Remy. The glitch didn't activate. One of Remy's uh, throws, if he moves into a mirror, um, he can get locked, locked in. But it didn't happen there. I shouldn't say he could get locked in. He can lock Yuri in. Remy gets hit out of the mirror, but then, like, uh, Yurian gets held in place. Whoa. I like that kind of play. No way to know. Oh, that Lestrong was pretty cool. If Remy gets hit, or if he gets hit by Mirror while throwing the opponent, while throwing Yurian, with I think the neutral throw, I don't remember which throw it is, um, Yurian gets held in place and can only be freed once Remy hits him, and Remy gets knocked out of throw animation. So Remy can jump over Yurian, get far away, whiff low strong until he's got full meter, wait patiently for the timer to run down, and then do a fat jumping combo right before it gets really low. And the Yurian is helpless. I think I've seen it once total in a real match. It's pretty funny. The balance patch that just came out changed very, very little. Most of the changes, most of the balance changes were extremely harmless. Fong is no longer unplayable. Um, Vega probably went up just a little bit. Um, a couple of the top tier characters like Guile and Yurian probably went down just a little bit. Balrog. But none of the changes were really so significant that they would see a character move up an entire tier or down an entire tier. Balrog wasn't really changed at all. He lost health. That's objectively a nerf, but like it's a very insignificant one. I mean, health is a big deal, it just was a small amount of health. That was a nice punish. I missed his cancelling normal, actually, because I was looking at the chat. What button was it? Was it stand forward? Was it low strong? It looked like he cancelled rather than linking, so it's probably low strong. 
stand strong. I think Stan Runhouse is the highest damage linking normal there, but I don't know if Makoto gets hit by b both hits of Stan Runhouse. I imagine she does, but like, I don't want to say that for sure. She's kind of small, and it has a very high hitbox. If you get Stan Runhouse, you can get a one frame link into uh, Super 2. It might be a two frame link, actually. Hi. You can also do stuff like a uh, low strong boom super. But the thing is, you have to pay the last hit of that. You don't have to, but like if you want to be close. If he didn't pay the last hit his low strong into boom, the low strong would whiff. So he'd have to approach. If he did pay the last hit, he wouldn't have down charge. Or back charge, rather. The real question, the most significant character where I'm kind of wondering what their tier is right now is probably Ryu. Ryu was, I don't know if Ryu was actually really at all strong in Season 1. Like, I think he overall was pretty good. I don't know if I ever thought he was, like, most of his, most of his matchups are just very even. But in Season 2 he was obviously pretty weak. And he got, the, the main two nerfs he got, he got back. Well, I shouldn't say the main two. The absolute, the main nerf he got was the nerf to the forward throw. But, uh, and he didn't get that back. But the stand short and the stand strong are both fairly important things for him. This is Tominaga, yes. This will kill. That was a good late. That kind of thing is really good against X kicks and jump in parry. It's not a secret that Rescratch V name kick was horribly nerfed. But the thing about that button, it's not really it's not really a big deal. It should be better. It should be more like a Akuma Scratch medium kick, which is definitely better. Similar range, but a much better hitbox than her box. Um, the problem with uh, I shouldn't say the problem. Like the thing about reuse crutch medium kick is everyone has a really good concept of how far that goes from other Street Fighter games, and there was like a universal nerf to range in general, to like u range of useful buttons. Like if a button cancels, they wouldn't make it go that far. Cancels and comes out fast and is safe. They like balanced uh, normals a little bit more universally, and that was kind of a standout button, so it got uh, got uh, nerfed a bit. But like you know, people have no concept for wh how far Laura's normals should go because she's new. A lot of characters had extremely nerfed like range. Like honestly, Ken's crouch medium kick was nerfed like just as much as Ryu's was, and I, you almost never see anyone talk about that. Because Ryu's is more central to his game, I suppose. Look at all that dizzy. Oh no! That was a kill! He had the kill. He still got it. Anti air chop you can do towards fierce, I think. Or stand strong. Or towards strong? Nope. There's a lot of buttons like that that like kind of like aren't as good. Chun Li's crouch medium kick is about as good as it ever was. But if you look at like Chun Li's far stand strong in Street Fighter three and four, and then look at far stand strong in Street Fighter five, it's like you know it's nothing. Chun Li stand strong now has like negative range. Or it was one of her main pokes in like other games. I think they should buff Ryu's Crouch Medium Kick, do not get me wrong. Uh, 
But they were just kind of picky about the range a cancel could have. The only cancels with really significant range are heavies. Things like Alex Stanfierce and Bison Stanfierce have extremely good range. But they're pretty slow. Whoa, wait, did that just happen? Why'd that work? Why did that work? Is this Ken just dumb? It looked like he didn't do anything. This is a two-frame grab, you can hold up. Did he get gimmicked out? If he didn't notice that Alex was running Super 1, then he might have just, like, you know, tried to block it like a Super 2. I think that's probably what happened. Most people have the exposure to at least know what Alex's Super 1 is, even if no one picks it. I guess a lot of people might not know that you can hold up if they're, like, not super good. But this kind of looks like he's got, like, a pretty good knowledge of how to play. So he probably got memed by not realizing it was Super 1, since that's such a weird thing in the first place. That did a lot of fucking damage. That was a pretty good example of just how strong that super is. That was literally a half of Alex's health bar, which is like the mid, it's like the average, high average health bar. And that's a pretty short combo, low forward super. Shinryukun is pretty strong. I knew it was strong, but like shit, it's just kind of cool to see it like that. It wasn't even the last hit they killed. Oh. DPs can't trade with normals. Due to input priority. Special moves beat normals if they connect on the same frame. DPs also have pretty good hitboxes and decent startup. So even though a lot of the non-EX ones aren't invincible, they still have a good capacity to beat normals. It's pretty unsafe. And by pretty unsafe, I mean literally one of the most unsafe attacks in the entire game. Why is he running power bomb anyway? Nice catch. Okay, so you can juggle into that raw. I thought you could, but I wasn't really sure. I shouldn't say I should non raw. I think I knew that combo worked. Oh, what a weird little gimmick. Alex is a slugger, man. Alex has a pretty cool play style. I've always liked watching him do things. Nice. Oh, the knee didn't hit. It looks good. I can't believe that didn't hit. That normally isn't that hard to pick up. The EX knee is a hit grab, and the regular knee is just a grab grab. That's invincible. It's invincible for exactly two frames, which is exactly how long you need it to be invincible in order to grab the opponent. It also has decent range. The only problem with it is that you can jump out and it has no setups. So it's basically like a worse Sky Ultra 2. Alex's buffs are actually pretty cool. They're not what people were asking for, but they're not bad. There it is. Safe Light Elbow is like a pretty big deal. And he got pokes, but they weren't the pokes people were asking for. People were asking for like low strong and shit. But he got like stand forward and crouch forward. Overall, he's like pretty buffed. <laughs> Wake up, stomp.
All they have to do to make Alex a high tier character is to make me better. Honestly, in this game, Alex is really good pokes are like stay medium kick and uh... I guess that's it. Those are like the main, that's the main, stay medium kick and like towards strong. Towards strong is the overhead now, so I can understand why they didn't make that a good poke. But I always thought it was kind of strange that like, you know, low strong was the button they picked to be the god hitbox. And not stay medium kick. So I'm kind of pleased to see that being buffed. Still not great though. His low strong in season one was stronger than any poke he has now, from what I from what I can tell. <laughs> it wasn't even that bad for him to have that because it was counterproductive to a lot of the other stuff he wanted to do. It allowed him to play a footsie game a little bit, but the footsie game didn't really help him. It just made him not helpless in footsies. Like yeah, he could play it, but all the time he was playing it, he wasn't getting up in and getting his mix up and getting his blocked lariats and stuff. But if you were forced to play the footsie game by a good opponent, you know, at least you could do low strong and be okay. It was like a worse Kareen stand medium kick, but only slightly worse. But now it's like, um, you know, not that good. It was okay to have the season one low strong. A lot of people thought it was oppressive. I thought it was, I thought it was okay for all the characters I played. Which at the time was like Laura. <laughs> but like, um. I thought that it would be bad if there was like a character who couldn't fight it the way Laura could. And I figured it was probably. There probably was a character who could fight it the way Laura could. Who couldn't fight it the way Laura could. Because, um. Laura has really good capacity to fight opposing normals. I don't know if there was actually a character who just got locked down by Alex Low Strong. Nice confirm. Target combo is technically safe by itself, but you can make it really, really safe by throwing an EX fireball. This is a decent scenario for Oro. Oro really struggles to get a true blue mix up there, or like high damage one rather. He can quite easily get a mix up there. See that Ken stand fierce? That was a tricky mix-up, because it could have been low short DP, it could have been a stand strong or stand fierce DP. And even if Oro parried, Oro had to preemptively parry a bunch of times. If, if Ken did uh, stand fierce into hard DP, Oro had to do repeated parries. If he didn't do repeated high parries, he was dead. Ugh. And yet if Ken didn't cancel the DP and Aura went for repeated parries, Ken would have been able to walk away without actually dying. Oh, what the fuck was that? That was supposed to be Crouch Fierce into Super, but he accidentally got a hard firewall. Which killed his entire everything. That was a really bad double jump. Should have died for that one. That was tricky. Didn't get it though. The longer the fireball has to travel, travel the better your, your mix-up is going to be. Because the more time you have to approach. If you can be next to the opponent, right as the fireball's about to hit, you have a really, really sick mix-up between Universal Overhead and like Low Short. And you can combo either of those into like Stand Strong. Wow. Or our only combos. Jump back strong? Jump back jab? That's pretty cool. Point blank, Universal Overhead into EXDP. I didn't actually know that worked. I've never had a Ken do that to me. That's really cool. Oh, terrible double jump. He put himself in a really bad mix-up position because of that, that double jump. Double jumps are committal. It's kind of like, uh, it's a lot like um, Dalsum's teleport. All the time you haven't teleported yet in your air jump, your air jump, all the time you haven't teleported yet, there's always the capacity for you to teleport. So it makes people really nervous to like do stuff like anti-air DP or something like that. All right, very nice. <laughs> that was such a bad decision. He should stay far away and maybe put a super on the screen and wait patiently. Oh my god, how do you choke that game away? He had such a good position. Or was great at chipping the opponent out. He had the worst stomp in history. Stomping at all was dumb. Even if it was like an EX stomp, 
It was just inviting danger. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, but or like, you know, all the time he hasn't used his double jump, there's always the capacity for him to use his double jump, which makes the opponent have to kind of consider not doing certain anti-air kind of options. But once he uses his double jump, especially if he uses a double jump to go upwards, the opponent can reposition themselves so uh, his air buttons won't hit them, either by walking under him or uh, just getting a little bit further away from him. And then they can put him in a bad situation where he's forced to guess on the parry. Speaking as Anoro, who's the master of jumping repeatedly midair. I think my knowledge of double jumps is pretty much complete. Nice job. Very good anti-air at that stage in the match. It was more important to, to be successful than to do damage. That means get up and fight. Get up and come. Ugh. No punish. Hugo's punish there is kind of, like, it's not great. He gets hard SPD, and if he has Super 3, he can do Super 3. It's, like, fine. But, like, Hugo kind of... If Hugo doesn't have time for a clap, his punish is pretty short. And he doesn't have a time for a clap after that Super. But, like, Reversal Super was definitely the play. Ah, Reversal Super was the play there, too. Raw Super is not that bad for Hugo. <laughs> that Hugo got worked in footsies. That was a really clean match for the Ken player. Hugo never had anything. The Ken made some minor drops for like like that made him punishable, and that's where he took most of his damage. But the way he played footsies was basically perfect. Ah, got forced the blood taunt. That was good. That was a good jump. Mm. Ken can punish that, I think. He definitely could have punished it with super. I don't know why he didn't. I think Ken can just sweep. Shoto sweep is pretty good at punishing stuff. I'm pretty... He definitely could have supered, man. Oh, that's a kill. Why'd he taunt? Why'd he just do stand strong or something? I am pro-griefing. I think anyone who's um, anti-griefing needs to get s humbled still. That's not really what I think. What I really think is someone can taunt if they want to, as long as they're good enough to actually taunt. If they're good enough to actually taunt, they earned it. If they're not good enough to actually taunt... No punishes! I'm like pretty sure Ken can super there. Like 90%. Oro can always punish any slap with Sam Roundhouse. And definitely, Sam Roundhouse is like less range and slower than uh, Ken Super. The only thing I can think of is that he's going for a bigger punish and missing the reversal window. He's like trying to do like reversal, like low forward Super or something like that. I definitely say, I wouldn't really... I mean, Taunt is in the game. Oops. I didn't click the new video. This playlist is in reverse, so it went to the video we just watched instead of the video we that comes next. Hiro Yuki. I think that's a common name, I think. I think it's just a name. One parry to react to what he was parrying, and then shifted to block when he realized parrying more wasn't really worth it. That being said, parrying more probably was worth it. That's a bunch of free meter if you ever parry some of these lightning legs. Actually, punishing it is an entirely different question. Teabagging never meant anything. Cartho range. The delay between those two actions. <laughs> Q's juggling properties are so strange. Wow! 
taunt. Watch for their approach. Super. He's got three taunts up, but he still doesn't have that much health. Like, all three of those taunts together are probably just about doubling the amount of health you see. A little less. So that helps a bit. He's got, like, generously more HP than Chun-Li right now. He's probably got, like, four times as much HP as Chun-Li has. But Chun-Li's probably, like, four times better in footsies, to be honest. That's a punish! Even a throw won't kill, I don't think, from Chun-Li. I'm pretty sure... Oh, back fierce. Nice. That's a nice little combo. Ken has to be really choosy about his combos into DP. I think low forward the hard DP works on everyone. But every now and then there'll be characters who like standing or crouching will like fall out of the later hits of DP. I think the the most disrespectful mechanic I've ever seen in any game is probably uh, Mercy in Mortal Kombat. Old Mortal Kombat. There was a command you could input in Mortal Kombat. I don't remember if it was 2. It was 3, I think. It might have been 2 as well. I think it was 2 and 3. It might have just been 3. There was a command you could do where once you got to the finish him screen, you could bring your opponent back to life with a small amount of health with a certain command. It's called a Mercy. How fucking disrespectful is that? To bring your opponent back to life, give them another chance to kill you, and then still beat them. Taunting in GG like makes your opponent have like half tension at the beginning of the next round or something, right? Something like that. There was also a there was a specific kind of fatality that was only available after a mercy. It might have been an animality. I like how staying strong from Ken just beat reversal. Successful reversal EX lightning legs. Chun Li has two reversals. It's EX legs. I mean, reversal EX bird. Chun Li has two reversals. She's got EX legs and EX spinning bird kick. And um, both of them have a little bit of invincibility, but both of them have vulnerable periods before they connect. So a good meaty can beat either one. I don't think it was friendship. It might have been. Mortal Kombat 3 had animalities, babalities, friendships, fatalities, and brutalities, I think. And I'm pretty sure that brutalities didn't require mercy. Brutalities were pretty hyped too. It was like a, like a, like a 10 button sequence that you had to just do. And the buttons could be any button, it could be like block. And it would just give you an attack during that sequence. And you would just beat the opponent up so hard that they exploded. They had the same animation, or like a similar animation for every character, but they were pretty hype. Yeah, Shinryuken's pretty strong. That's probably a fully mashed Shinryuken for what it's worth. For what it's worth, Hyper Bomb does a little bit more damage if you land it after a back turn. That mirror placement was kind of good, but kind of bad. A good mirror would have comboed out of the uh, towards Fierce. If he was like a f pixel closer, would have been the perfect mirror. Oh, that's right. Good. 
EX mirror, he saw. That was really smart. Oh my god, he got a third mirror. Yurian can only stock two mirrors, but between the pressure you get from two mirrors, you build meter for a third mirror. If at least one of them works. And I think... I think if the other one... If one is blocked and one works, I think you build up the meter for a third one. That Aegis use was pretty great. This is Totsuka Sensei. This is probably the third or fourth best Dudley. Urian has three mirrors that go straight. One's really close, one's kind of close, one's kind of far away. The X mirror is the, uh, any two punches, and it goes up. It doesn't cost any extra meter. People just call it EX mirror because it, it's two punches to do. It's just a fourth mirror placement. It's kind of cool. That upward placement can be really good. Um, honestly, like, additional critical arts are going to mean almost nothing, I'm pretty sure. A second critical art will only be slightly, make critical art slightly more relevant than the initial critical art. If they're choose based, I can't see that it working at all. What would be kind of cool, that's a hard combo. I think it only works on some characters. Maybe she'll throw into EX Aegis. Um, what would be kind of cool is if the new supers give you new combo avenues. That's the absolute best way they could do it. So like a scenario where you normally didn't have a super combo you got like a super combo, or a scenario where you normally had a very very bad super combo, you got a good one. Or if they added more setup supers like a uh, Dalsim super, that would be cool. You know what would actually be rad? If they made it 4 bars, and they made supers cost 2 bars. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kinda neat? Make it more like this game. If you could stock two simultaneous supers. <laughs> Don't forget, in Cross Tekken, it was a three bar, it was a three meter EX meter. And it only cost two bars to <laughs> use the super. I did hear about the new DBZ game. Arc System Works is getting DBZ. It's going to be pretty neat. Yeah, they'd have to scale back supers a lot. <laughs> it's so nutty to think of like adding like a custom combo system to Street Fighter V. And yeah, that's basically what they did with Alpha. I don't remember what the super s system was in Alpha 1. <laughs> well, what kind of mode do you have to be in? This is a nice pickup. That was a really, really good continuation. And he got a really nice combo out of it. That was kind of beautiful, so let's watch it again. That super conversion was just really nice. That's a really like tough one to pick up from that range. And then he sh he successfully swapped from like a precise combo to a baby combo, which was probably harder than just doing the precise combo the entire way. But once he was in the baby combo, everything was easier. He still had to do like the Kara dash punch at the end. What does that name mean anyway? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy difficult. Unfortunately, he dropped it. He got the universal overhead and then comboed into brown Ganadian stuff. Parts of uh, not Keeper Jin, the other one. Whoa. Keeper Jin is a three button sequence, I think. I think that was Maida Jin. Maida Jin is a two button sequence. It's like Far Stand Fierce to like Whiff Short to Far Stand Fierce, something like that. He can go under that. He should have gone under it. I'm pretty sure that he could have shouldered or dash punched or something. That should have been cancelled to Ganae. I don't think Yang gets a combo there. Oh. 
思うけどスカシスカシ昇竜拳だスカシ昇竜拳だねうわー根性最初ボールとカウントの4回3はラテじゃないラテも吸い込まれて痛いこれだけでも痛い痛い痛い痛いでゲージ半分だもんな飛んでいてそしてもうたまったおう Failed to chase it down. This won't hit. That was the right amount of parrying. <laughs> Those first three parries were guaranteed, but once he got closer than that,、um, Akuma could mix him up. So he got free meter for going for those first three parries. And he wasn't in any more danger for it. That was like, pretty smart. Sho is a super, super good Yon. Now he's pretty much dead. He had to land and parry, and then he had to go for like, a god parry. It was in a super, super good position there. Capcom wants SF5 to succeed, and they're willing to be extremely, um, uh, how do you say? Fan service y in order to make that happen. Whether they'll succeed is a, a different question, but they're certainly going to try. Nice. Got some meter build, too. Nice. The red parry is pretty. Red parries are really, really good against Yang because you often have to parry in the. Like, you only have one guess. You have to guess on the timing. But the second wreck is always going to be like a forward parry. And the second wreck is safe, so, like, you know, generally safe, it depends on the character. So it, like, makes him. It makes a safe move unsafe. I like that you don't actually. The character select is not a part of ranked. Just for speed. I just end up picking the same character every time anyway. If I could set it before the fact, that's fine for me. My gripe is that、um, even with that kind of speed consideration, it's still like slow. It's still really fucking slow. Is this Tomi? What's up with the name? He already looks a lot like Tomi. Well placed, DX Rekka. Furrow is quite good. Toward short missed that combo s there. Doesn't add much damage, but it gives you a slightly marginally better reset scenario. I can't believe that worked. That's gonna kill. When you get to a stage like this in the match, it's okay to have a nutty play. And that was a nutty play. Yen kind of. The, the tiering in this game is pretty consistent. There would just be a new god tier. I mean, the balance would obviously be slightly better if you're going to remove anyone from the bottom or the top. The thing about Yan Chan and Ken is that, like, well, Yan and Ken at least are pretty interesting. Even if they're strong. Yan for very complex reasons, Ken for very simple reasons. He probably could have supered after that, but. Hard to be ready for it. He stayed very safe to Karakusa there. That entire little sequence, he was never really in a position where he had his back. He had Makoto in the corner, which is where Makoto can kill you. It's not like there's a whole bunch of characters who are all even in this game, and then like a few god tiers and a few bottom tiers. 
Nice. It'd be kind of cool if you could um, queue with a, a random select, or queue with a random select that only selects from a pool of characters that you can choose. It's like, give me a random character between, like, fucking, I don't know, Chun Li Gao and Nash. I might be the reason that Online Edition has a random select feature. There was, right when Online Edition was announced, there was a Capcom thread that was like, suggest features for Online Edition. And I was the first person to recommend random select, and possibly the only one. I was like, this game doesn't have a random select, that one. And they apparently used features from that thread on Capcom Fighters to uh, come up with things to be in the game. I was kind of hoping there would be random select tournaments. In Street Fighter Alpha 3, there's a lot of tournaments where um, people choose their character based on random select. What's up with the sound of this video? I hate it. Why is there something wrong with every video? I muted it. Online edition, it was popular for a pretty long time. Now it's like most of the players play on Fight Kid. I was on the top 10 list of ours for pretty much forever. In the first like three years that, um, Fight Cape was out. In all the time I played, I only... F no, I don't think I ever played an Aura who was better than me. On on that. I played a few of the Auras who were higher ranked than me, and I could beat them. But the rank was mostly... It was half skill and half put in the hours, and I wasn't putting in the hours. But, like, I was putting in the hours to get top 10. I just wasn't getting... I wasn't putting in the hours to be, like, top 1. But I played the guys like Tony Souther who were, like, the top... Like, 2, top 3. And they were, like, good, but they weren't on my level. There weren't that many players who were really, truly on my level. I think the only, like, player who I played in all the time I played OE, um, the only player I played who was, like, truly good was, uh, uh, Jerry Rodriguez. My win ratio was pretty nuts. It was like 40 or 50 wins per loss in ranked. Very difficult for Hugh, this matchup. Oh, I played Cruz too, but I never played him in ranked. I never ran into Dine on that. He was probably on the Xbox 360 version. I'll play some Third Strike right now if you want to. I'll do it right now, dude. Say the word. I guess you already said the word by asking. Fuck this video. I didn't know Alex's knees are that fast. 